It is time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament. We are playing Labyrinth the Awakening in the English leg, and it is do or tie time for Mooney's Aqualad. Dancing Bear is at five good resources. That means she's pretty darn close. It's only, uh, well, I guess it's going to take her three countries, so maybe it's not as do or die time. But I did glance at their cards here, and Mooney. If you recall, last round of turn, or last turn, uh, I got to get my terminology right. Okay, so we're going to say rounds are when they do one, two card, one, two card, and turns are when they're, you know, a whole hand of cards. So, or we could just say last hand of cards, uh, Mooney had a really bad hand. Well, not really bad hand, but a pretty bad hand compared to Dancing Bear, and she capitalized on that and is starting to take control. So what are Mooney's prospects in getting things back? Well, he's got some nice reaction markers down there in Somalia. If you don't know this game, The Awakening, these reaction markers and these awakening markers are a, a really nice thing. I actually like these quite a bit. Um, they give you a modifier on your rolls. Uh, remember, the, the jihadist players want low rolls, general. Most rolls, not all rolls. Um, that they give a modifier on. They give a modifier on most rolls, that's what I want to say. And the US player, they want higher rolls, okay, for, for their war of ideas and things like that. It does that, but it also, and this is what I think is especially special, it allows places to move on their own. It's not all about you, main characters, players, of the game. In Somalia, it's about the people, and they are actually the main characters, Although, in this game, you can still mess with them and change things on your own. If Mooney just leaves this there and Dancing Bear doesn't remove any reaction markers or um, add any awakening markers, it's going to flip to Islamist rule at the end of this hand on its own. Uh, so he's got that going there and in Turkey. So that could be, you know, what, what would that look like on our, our little chart here? Islamist resources, that would get it up to four and... So he he would just need need to be able to like convert like Central Asia somewhere that's uh, adjacent to one of the Islamist rules he already has. That's a big if. A lot can happen on this turn, and I for one am anxious to figure out what's going on or what's going to happen. Let's take a look over here just to kind of see where Dancing Bear is sitting. Everyone's good on resources right now, although um, Mooney's got to think about bumping it up a couple before the turn's over as well, or he is going to run out of money. Um, maybe he can make Dancing Bear run out of money if he starts flipping things to Islamist rule. Um, in fact, she might want to consider going into Afghanistan, uh, which can be a problem. Um, but her War of Ideas area is not so great. She's in negative one, middle on the global war on, on terror relations. Though if, you know, if Mooney just explores a couple of these, these uh, other non-Muslim countries here, Chances are they'll go to soft. He hasn't been very lucky on that so far, which is partially, you know, along with the good hand of cards, helped Dancing Bear quite a bit last hand. Um, that, you know, she's just, the, the, the conversion thing, or to see if they're hard or soft, has, has been rolling high. Really, it's like a two-thirds chance that it's going to be soft. She's been getting that one-third probability uh, percentage quite a bit. So let's let's just, uh, I'll stop jabbering um, and we will play and then I'll jabber some more. So before I play some more, I, I had talked up Mooney's hand of cards uh, a, a little bit during my introduction to this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, but now let's look at it. I think you might want to see it because look at this. He's got all these threes. Those are strong, strong cards for him. He's got two American events, which you might be like, oh no, he, I mean, it's better, it's actually better sometimes to have these than to have your opponent have them, but if you look at what they actually do, they aren't going to do anything if he plays them right off the bat. There's no, the events aren't eligible to be triggered for Dancing Bear, so that's no problem. None of these are going to be a problem for him. This is all just stuff he can use, so he can, he's really opened up. He doesn't have to think about what he's going to use for his first plot or anything like that to to ditch the cards effect and so he's just he's got a really free hand in this turn um, that's he's got you know so now he's got to think about what to do with that he he doesn't have a real clear clear option as to 
or clear strategy as to what he's doing. He's just been trying to poke around places and bother her, but she hasn't really been taking the bait or bothered that much. Um, and his, you know, his massive forces in Pakistan really didn't come come to much there. So we'll see if he can come up with something. Think, Mooney, think. Mooney threw a bit of good uh, money after bad, or in other words, took a risk and it didn't pay off. Uh, tried to tried to do a jihad here in Pakistan. Just kind of wants to keep the pressure there. He would really like to get those WMDs, um, especially since he has some pieces threatening the United States. Um, he's interested in that route. Uh, that didn't work. A uh, couple couple people died, and so then he's just doing some traveling. He traveled to Syria. He's traveling to Yemen. Um, he's got one more travel. Let's poke at India. Oh, another fair one, or another hard hard on terror place. That actually he just was hoping his luck would turn, or you know probabilities would be in his favor, but. Dancing Bear's luck held out. Let's see what she can do with her hand now. All right, so here's Dancing Bear's hand. I figure we showed Mooney's hand. You might want to see hers as well. Um, actually, not too bad either. Not quite as, as many threes as him. In fact, she only has one three. But again, the negative events aren't going to really affect her because there's no regime change country. There's no troops in Iraq. So she can kind of just play with impunity as well not have to worry about saving a card or discarding a card. So she'll probably get these out of her hand first and then move on from there. And she blew her turn in two cards trying to get the United Kingdom back, uh, to be hard on terror. It didn't really work. Spent a lot of time talking. They weren't convinced. Uh, she would really like her prestige to, to go up at least one. Um, she doesn't really have a troop situation where she can do that. So she's trying to convince world countries to Think like the U.S., which is hard. Think hard, people. Um, yeah, let's move on. All right, we had another round of turns. We see um, Mooney amassing in Syria, Central Asia. Um, those are both places he would like to turn. Unfortunately, Dancing Bear, after playing this uh, King Abdullah event to uh, shift Jordan to a fair ally, um, that bumped up her prestige. And then she, she decided to try a, a war of ideas in Sudan. She had an adjacent good. She had, a, I think there was maybe a, an awakening marker in there. But it doesn't matter because she rolled a six. So she had what she needed. So she got another fair good country or another um, good resources country. Jeez, what am I doing? She had a, yeah. So now she just needs to get two that are worth three. And then she's got the game. Does she have... Well, she's got the Gulf states. Gulf states would be a good um, candidate. Unfortunately, it costs a three, and she doesn't have much of that, so it might take her a whole turn even to try. Um, yeah, so that's where things are going as we go into the next round. Mooney's turn. Okay, Mooney is plotting in Syria here. Um, that's a place that Dancing Bear would like to turn. She would like to also keep the... Um, funding low. So she is going to, she can't get rid of both things, but she's going to use this back channel card for the ops value to remove one of the terror plots. So I'll just pick this one. It's the, it's a two plot. It was on a three card, so there could be a three in there. And I will tell you there is. So the other one's a three. She's also going to try a war of ideas because that'll just make it less likely for the plot to, um, uh, reduce things. So let's see if she can get it. She's got a plus two. I think it's just a straight plus two there because of that awakening marker. And we'll get the roll. That's a two. That's not going to be enough. I think that is enough to add aid, however, which could turn things. And let's go ahead and resolve the plot. It is a three, like I told you. And I think that might go off here. I actually don't know if the plot goes to here after it goes off. I think it doesn't because there's a... Isn't there something on here? Return plots to available. So I'm guessing that it just gets resolved. Okay, so we're going to resolve it and put it off the map. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that resolution off camera, and we'll move on from there with Mooney's turn. Okay, Dancing Bear's turn. She's got a choice to make. Uh, Mooney put down two more plots here. His, his goal is just to get funding up and get rid of this aid. Um, he would like to be able to turn Syria. There might be... 
Uh, there's WMDs. He might be able to, I think he gets them, a la Pakistan, if it flips. I'm not sure. That's something that was added in the um, the new game, Awakening. So I, I, I'm not aware of that yet, and I haven't looked it up, but I will. I will before it matters. Um, so anyway, none of that really matters for this. He's just trying to get his funding up so that he can keep drawing nine cards, get rid of this aid so that it's less likely that Dancing Bear will be able to flip it. Now, if Dancing Bear wants to get rid of just one of those plots, she has to get rid of two cards because she doesn't have any threes, so she'd have to use reserves to make it happen. She also has this Reaper, which she'd like to use to get rid of um, Mooney's last card, which would let her just play all, you know, another two cards without any sort of response, but in order to do that, she has to let both those plots go off. I, you know, I think since he's going to be at, one of the plots is going to go through anyway, I think she's going to go ahead and do that, use the Reaper. Um, that gets rid of this card, which is pretty nice card. Um, Mooney was saving this in case she was getting close, even closer to victory, he was going to make her take back um, one of her advances. So that's going to go to Dancing Bear again. She's got two twos. Um, should probably try a War of Ideas somewhere. Let's see, Jordan looks pretty good. Oh, maybe she'll go for the Gulf States, try to get that sealed up before things are over. The events are not compelling, so we'll go ahead and just do that now and end out the hand, or the turn. So Gulf States number one. She's got a plus one to the roll. Uh, no, minus one. Uh, yeah, so she's got to get it. Five or six, so let's look at our table, just so I can remember. Okay, five is success, because she gets a minus one because she's trying to shift it to good, but a plus one since there's a, an adjacent good. So this is gonna be a huge jump for her. Turns out there, good resources are now at nine. That's really good for her. And then we got a roll to see what, what country gets an awakening marker. And that's a nine. Looking at our special table here. We looks like we got Turkey gets an awakening market. That is really useful to her. The rolls have been generally going her way this game. So that's gonna keep, uh, I think that keeps Turkey from automatically shifting at the end of this hand of cards. And I gotta go quick, cause I hear there's movement, so maybe I'm, I'm needed. What can she do with this last two? There's not, no real good war of ideas use. She could go after Jordan, I suppose which could give her some, some benefit. And you know, she has been lucky. She could also try to do a War of Ideas somewhere else. She could also return some troops back to the track. That's maybe not a bad idea because they're not doing her a lot of good in the Gulf states. Let's look at what that would require. Um, it's one of those moments where you just get to see it all. It's nice. Okay, withdraw, da, 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 deploy. Track is good. Where the troops track? Treat troops, move any number of troops from one location on the board to the target. Okay, that's what I wanted to see, if she could move them both back. I don't know if she wants to use her one for that. She wants to be efficient with the numbers, even if it's maybe not the best use. She's going to roll for Jordan. She's been lucky. If she can bump Jordan up, that's going to um, be really helpful. A one, it did not work out. So that's going to be the end of the turn. We'll just go ahead and go through that. Uh, oh, we forgot to do these plots. Um, so I think these plots are going to get rid of this aid and basically just bump this up too. And I'll amend that later if I miss something. Um, these are all going to end up going back to the track eventually here. Minus one prestige. Reserves to zero. Okay. Global war on terror and at three. No. Uh, return plots available. Polarization and attrition. Here's where it's fun. So we'll look at. Um, this little table here, so we had a minus two, add a reaction marker, that's what I thought. So we're just gonna flip this over. So next turn, Turkey's gonna flip, unless there's more of those here. Now, Somalia, on the other hand, Somalia is at negative three. Shift to, shift to degrade. Okay, so it's gonna shift to adversity, ad adversary. So Turkey will shift next turn to adversary, and then from there, they'll become Islamic rule. Um, we're gonna add an awakening marker to Syria. Nothing happens in Lebanon, and I think that's all of our awakening and reaction markers. Okay, so we'll deal out and we'll be in a new hand. This has got Mooney very scared. He is actually not that far from securing his own victory, but you know, with a fresh hand of cards for both sides, 
Um, and most importantly for Dancing Bear, he's really got to worry about her. You know, she could potentially shift a country to good in one turn, like Iraq, for example, or Saudi Arabia, in one turn and just go ahead and win the game. So, you know, he's really got to start uh, playing a little more defensively. He's got some offensive options, but he's not going to get them in time because he's, he's counting on Somalia and Turkey to flip, you know, after the end of, of hands, and that's not going to be enough. So, not the strongest hand he's looking at, not the worst either. He's got a lot of U.S. events that he can he can time so that they don't actually do anything. Um, but really, what he needs is he needs his uh, he needs his gorillas in the right place, and right now they are not. He really needs to. And even just what can he do? Even if he were in Iraq or Saudi Arabia. He needs to start start punching back in some of these good states, but it might be too late. Too late for him. He's got to get pretty lucky. He's got to have some of that Dancing Bear luck if he's going to pull it out. All right, so it's Dancing Bear's turn to react. Mooney tried to put plots in Pakistan and the Gulf states. Neither of them worked. I mean, he needs to roll a 1 to do anything. Um, so he's working with the best he can. Doesn't really have any, like, events that are going to just do it for him. Um, and it's still early in the turn. So Dance Bear has to decide whether or not to try to respond to these people or else go for shifting. I think what she's going to do since, you know, Mooney was nice enough to put a person where she has some troops is to go ahead and use those troops. She doesn't have any one cards. She'll have to use a two card. Get her a guy, get her prestige up, and then try to flip, I guess, Saudi Arabia. Um, I think that might be, well, yeah, Saudi Arabia would probably be her best bet to try to flip that. She, yeah, Syria's not going to be enough. Yeah, Saudi Arabia would be good. Okay. And her luck ran out, or at least it took a pause. So Mooney has another turn to react. Um, still not great options. Uh, he lost his person in Saudi Arabia. I think he's really got to just keep hammering on Pakistan. I don't think he has really another option here. And, you know, he's kind of wanted Pakistan all along. Fortunately, he only has the, the one... Gorilla. I think last turn he actually could have shifted Pakistan to an adverse adversary, but I think that was maybe the card he lost. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay, after Mooney uh, tried tried to f and failed to, to get a plot off in Pakistan, it's now Dancing Bear's turn. She um, did get Saudi Arabia to fair, so now she's going to do her, her die roll. Uh, what does she need to get? She's got a Jason, and she needs to get a five or six, I think. Let's take a look at this, because this, this could be the game. If she gets this die roll off, the game's over right now. And I think we would be saying goodbye to Mooney. Five or six success, yeah. It's minus one attempting to shift a good, but there's an adjacent good. So she's got 33% chance of winning the game right now. And four is not going to cut it. Four will add an aid marker, however, which will help her later. We're in Saudi Arabia. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see if Mooney can respond. It's going to be tricky. All right, and Mooney has set up a scenario for Dancing Bear, wherein she can decide to try and deal with this terror plot or just go ahead and shift Saudi Arabia and win the game. He, you know, might have been, he could only get one cell in here. Um, it might have been argue. He tried to get more, but he he only rolled one out of three potential. Um, that he he could should have gone for a jihad instead of a plot. He went with the plot because he he was able to automatically put it down there, and you know he suffered a lot of bad rolls on Pakistan. I know Saudi Arabia. There's a better chance for it to come off, but that's the decision he made, and it might not be a great one because I think I think Dancy Bear is just going to go ahead and try it. She's got two two chances here to try to, to win the game. And she has to get a four or higher. So she's got 50-50 on each of the two chances. That one failed. She's going to try again. Let's do this Operation Serval. And that's going to be the game. Dancing Bear is our winner. And that means, you know, no ceremony, Mooney. we got to say goodbye to you. And that's sad. Mooney has had a storied career in the Real People um, multi-game solitaire mega tournament. But that career is now over. 
sad day, but we move on, right? We move on. Congratulations, Dancing Bear. You did a nice job. Nice job. Also had some luck. All right, we'll see you next time for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, it's going to be one of those games down there, I think. I'm not sure which one. We will find out.